So when you have a natural laminar flow of fused lugs, you reduce the drag by half. It turns out if you laminarize the rest of the, the fuselage from here back using some form of boundary layer control or weight propulsion or adding energy into the system with plasma or whatever you want to do, you'll cut the drag in half yet again. So there's a potential just using what's off the shelf of reducing the drag by a factor of four on the most draggy part of an airplane. And we already know how to use laminar flow weights. We're doing pretty good with that modern composite airplane. And we can do better yet with them by doing the same thing, using advanced boundary layer control systems, power and drag reduction. When I first started talking about power and drag reduction, uh, it was a reminder that we already know this stuff. You're seeing it show up in marine applications, shipping applications, cargo applications. Every other discipline except for general aviation is already using power and drag reduction because if you use a little bit of the power that you've got in your engine to make a hole in the air, and then fill in the hole behind you, clean up your mess, it turns out you only need half as much power to go the same speed. You hear that? Half as much power to go the same speed. But our math doesn't tell you that. You have to look away from it long enough to write another equation, or to at least write a balancing equation to balance out what you get from what's called the pressure thrust conformation. The math that we have is based on a concept called dynamic pressure, Q, one half rho V squared. And it assumes something that's analogous to me pulling a barge through a canal. If I pull a barge through a canal with a team of horses, I know how much horsepower it takes, literally, right? I can actually measure the thrust requirement because I can find out how much tension is in the lines. So that's how much horsepower it takes to move at a particular speed. Now, the problem with aviation and with marine applications is no canal bank. What are you pushing on? You're not pushing on a firm object that does not move. You're pushing on a viscous fluid medium that swirls and moves somewhere else every time you push on it. All it wants to do is go in a circle. Well, that natural tendency has been locked out of the basic physics of our equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. Force does not equal one half mass times acceleration. One half rho v squared dynamic pressure. If dynamic pressure was true and an accurate representation of the physics, you wouldn't need a drag coefficient that changes with velocity. Your drag coefficient would not drop as you go faster, as is a demonstrated fact of science ever since we started flying. So, in the analogy of pulling the bars with the horses down the canal, what we have to remember is now we're pushing against fluid. And if we use part of our energy to make drag less, parting the air, filling it in, parting the water, filling it in, moving some water through ballast tanks as they're doing in ships, blowing some bubbles as they're doing in submarines, using uh, various devices that cause the boundary layer to move along with the air, uh, along with the vehicle. All of these wonderful ideas that are all proven facts of science, you need half as much power to go the 